Thank you to the organizers uh, and to everybody here. It's been really nice to be in Vienna. Um, the, uh, the, it seems to be the second most hot nation's capital, but the first is, well, maybe not over the world, but DC is still, I think, slightly warmer. So we're having, and the humidity is much better too. So it's, it's, a, it's a bed better than being in DC at this time. Thank you for the invite. Uh, uh, but we'll talk about the informal nonlinear wave equation. Um, and, and this is the defocusing uh, case. And we're interested in radially uh, symmetric. And, of course, it'd be nice to show this for general data, but that's a bit, we use the radial symmetry quite a lot in, in this paper. And, and so it, to move to the general case would, of course, be nice, but it's not a trivial matter. Um, so we prove scattering. Uh, Oh, and we're considering dimensions g bigger than three. Uh, we prove global well posimus and scattering for u naught in h one half u one. H dot minus one half eight. So this is theta. And this is our initial velocity. So you know why H one half? Let's let's say why H one half. Um, those of you who in my talks, I like H one half, but why? Why do I like it? Right. So, um, well, I like it because, well, you'll see why. The, the, any of these equations are a nice toy model because they have a, a scaling symmetry. Right. So, if you have a solution, then in this case, you have. family of solutions, and uh, family is um, for any lambda bigger than zero. So in this case, um, the exponent is e minus 1 over 2, which is going to preserve your h1 half one. Um, so uh, that turns out to be a very important uh, case then to study this problem. I'll write down some results uh, that were proved by some of my colleagues, actually. Uh, we'll call this equation one. I don't think there's going to be a two. But, but you know, whatever. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Once I had it with that talk where someone put a star and then he put two stars, and then he put three stars, and at some point he started numbering them. So it's like the development of of numbers, like <laughs> in real time, right? <laughs> like he just kept writing these little, and then eventually he realized he needed to just write a number instead of. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's locally well posed for u naught in h one half, u one in h minus one half, and that's Lindblad and Sog. Uh, I think they were, yeah. And then it is ill posed. 
P0 in HS, U1 in HS, HS minus 1, when S is less than a half, and that's Lindblad and Sock. Um, I'll also cite Polyander, Christ, and Tau um, for the KDV. They have a, a an, an NLF, they have another like that. One is lovely, well posed pattern for you know, half. U1 is half small. And then we have a fourth result by Krauss that I'm going to use. Pattern for if you have in the weighted space. Okay. Um, so let me. Um, yep, uh, oh, this one's also in blood and stock. Uh, so let me skip over one and two, like this, the dot one and dot two. Um, and let me say, but just briefly prove three and four, not because, I mean, these are well known, you know, but um, still I want to talk about them. So, so to prove the small data, you just have this strict arts norm, right? Uh, Right, so this is, I mean, we probably everybody here knows how to do this, but whatever, we'll do it again. So you get an epsilon here, and then you put epsilon to the d plus 3 over d minus 1, okay, then you close the bootstrap, right? Okay, simple. Um, but then, of course, as you know, then if you could somehow control this norm, then you could do the same thing, right? Like if you knew that this norm was finite, then that would be it. You'd have your scattering, even if the data was large, and you just find an interval where it's, you find a number of intervals where it's small, and then go from there. So, so that's, that's, my point is that this is our, our goal, right? We want this norm to be finite. Um, so now, suppose we want to do a large data result, like the one Strauss did, but we're in a weighted space. You know, we're in a weighted, like this space here is going to definitely embed into H1 half cross H minus one half, right? But it, it embeds into it. It's it's much smaller than that space, right? So, well, the result of Strauss is that you have this conformal energy you.
Um, and, and this is kind of uh, and and here. And now there is your your so of course in our case it's zero, right? But Strauss's result doesn't require the data to be radially symmetric. So all right, so so what do we do then? Well, there's a couple of things you can do, but but you know that this is conserved. So if you start at, at and you know at t equals zero, it's it's finite, right? Because of your of this norm being finite. So then you can say, well, the integral, so you have some maximal interval of existence, and you could say whatever that is, capital T, um, U L T X is, is going to end up being bounded by the integral from one to T of E of zero over t squared dt, that's bounded by e of zero. So the long times, you get the scattering sizes bounded, right? But now, the short times, then you have your usual energy. Well, that, that, that's also going to give you a bound on this integral from zero to one, right? And and that energy is clearly finite too. In this case, so you okay? So you've got your this is the Strauss result, right? So um, we've we've got the you know if we have data in this nice space, then we get scattered, right? Because we get that our that our this norm is finite on the whole interval, right? On all of R. Or, and, and, and it's uniformly bounded on the maximal interval of existence. So you could always extend it further if it wasn't global. And then once it's global, you can say it scatters. So, so, so this is, this is what, what we want, right? We want to do something like this. But now I'm going to talk about the non, now we're just talking about data in H1 half, right? So we're going to not be in a weighted space necessarily. We're not going to be in a, H1, you know, all those types of things. We're going to remove those. But, but uh, of course, we're always going to do our usual, we're PDE people, right? So we're always going to approximate with the data in a short space, right? So we always approximate with data in a short space. So we know that our data has, is scattering, but we just need to show that the size doesn't, de it depends only on the H1 half norm, right? So, so we start with an approximation of our data in a short space, and we know it's global. And scatters, but then we show that the size doesn't depend on anything but the H1 half norm, right? So this is, or yeah, so so this is, this is what we, what we want to do. So so that's something to say. Um, okay, so it's a bit. So let's let's start with an intermediate theorem. This was proved in 2022, and I don't know, 2023, I mean, was it 2023? Who knows, right? I mean, the, these papers take more than a year, right? <laughs> okay, but 2022, I think this is right. Uh, if u naught is in t over t plus a half, and u1 is in radio, because um, yeah, then you get that thing happening where you write a paper and then you, it takes a year or two to get it on a journal, but then you write another paper and so somehow the later result was earlier than the newer result, so it gets complicated. But anyway, um, it was about this time, I guess. Um, one is globally well-posed and scattering. 
And moreover, you have you you actually have a polynomial bound. is less than or equal to a to the m, where m is a function of b. And this is in b equals b greater than 3. Um, and then uh, you have um, a is the So why do this, right? So it turns out that this actually has the same scaling as H1 has, right? And it embeds, this is a standard Bessel space, right? And it embeds into H1 half, but it's still scale invariant. So it's not like the, you know, this, it's not this, right? It's not something that has lots of extra regularity and also some kind of decay or something like that. But it's 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 precisely the um, the the a scale invariant quantity, but it, it gives you some extra information because it's in a Bessel space. So you have a, a and in radial, yeah, and so it's because of L one data. So the way I look at it is this, and this is perhaps you can how I think about it. So. It's, it's a useful way to get a handle on some of these problems. So, in the because it's radial, you know that it can only um, be, have a problem at the origin, right? Because it's radially symmetric. Roughly speaking, this is heuristic, right? You can only have a problem at the origin. But because of the Bessoff norm, you also have a dispersive estimate, which means you can only really have a problem at t equals zero. So the problem is all at t equals zero, r equals zero. And we know it's locally well posed, right? And so, so you just you get hit as hard as you can with everything it has, right? I mean, it just hits you with everything it has, right? t equals zero, r equals zero. But that's it. It's done. It doesn't have anything left to do, right? So you just have to get through that, that you know, sort of bad thing, you know? And then, and then you're, you're, you're in better shape afterward, right? So now we have, and, and, and so I've actually, here I have some, I, so then radial is, is um, you know, along here, right? The, the problem is all along the origin. And then non, and I've also done non-radial with the Bessoff space. So there, in that case, you're all, the problem is all, and, and that's for a different equation, but I've, I've done, a Bessoff space without radial symmetry. So then in that case, you're, you're getting hit at t equals zero, but it can hit you anywhere along in Rn, right? And so, so obviously, it'd be nice to eventually fill this all in, but, but this, is, this is roughly the, the way of trying to get a hold of this problem, right? That, that the Bessoff norm, somehow, it, it's... Anyway, that's the rough heuristic of it, right? But, but now, of course, we have to... To do that, um, you have to actually do it. We can't just do the heuristic. So we say um, we split u equals v plus w because we know we have a solution, right? We know we have, and we, we know we certainly know we have a local solution, right? We certainly know we have a local solution. So um, So we just solve these two equations, but v starts at zero. And then w is a free weight equation with our initial data. I'm trying to spend some time on this because I, does it end at 1230? Okay, yeah, great. I just I want to spend time on this because you know I don't want to just jump into the proof of the in all the generalities. You know. Um, okay, so yeah, so now we take our energy 
our conformal energy to be one fourth plus F L V. So it's the same energy, it's just conformal energy, it's just with V only. And, and there's no reason, that's not going to be conserved, right? Clearly it's not conserved, right? Because it starts at zero and it's not going to stay zero. But, but notice what we have over here, and this is really important. Um, in general, we could do this, right? We could just write that this is bounded by E of T, right? I mean, we, we, the reason I did it before was just E of zero is equal to E of T. But if it wasn't, then this would control your, your um, uh, conformal energy. And, and in fact, if you could even, I mean, what we're going to do, I mean, we're going to start with E is zero at zero, so we might even integrate from zero to T because we can deal with this one over T squared here at the origin. Um, so, so morally speaking, and or heuristically, we, we, we would, it would be okay if it was bounded by T. Not, not really, right? Because we don't, we don't quite want the one over T, but, but if it was close to T, right? If it was close to T, then it would, it would be, okay. like if we could get to T, we're probably close to okay, right? Like that's, that's sort of the way, it, you know, if you're close to T, you're close to okay. But, but allow some growth for E of T is the point, right? It allows you to have some growth as long as it's not too fast. So, um, but yeah, so, so anyway, we want to do that. So, but, but now we have to ask, well, what is the, our energy doesn't, isn't conserved, but, but it's, it's driven by this, This difference, right? Right. I mean, if we had, you know, because this is, of course, that's, you know, if you just had that, then you're, you're okay, right? The energy is conserved. So, it's going to end up being equal to one half. Okay, so, all right, so that's, that's pretty good. Um, all right. Um, well, we're in good shape because this is bounded. Well, of course, these quantities here, the L2 norm of those is controlled by E of T. Right? Is it bounded by E of T? The one half times B plus or minus X times F L2. Um, yeah. So, um, but now we have our three wave equation. Well, we have our radial sublet embedding, right? And we're in a Bessoff space. So we have the radial sublet embedding, which is okay, uh, even at the endpoint, and then uh, you have your vessel or your dispersive estimate is bounded by a, 
And so therefore, d plus or minus x. And, and this is this is going to control f. Is that guy? This is pointwise bounded by A power. Didn't write it down one time. So there's a lot of exponents, but um, it, it works. And so then, um, okay, but now um, W to the D plus one, or D minus one, the L2 norm of that is bounded by W LX to D plus one over D minus one to the d plus 1 over d minus 1, right? That's, that's good. And then on the other hand, this, this, w, this, this one here, this one here is bounded by uh, d minus 3 over d minus 1. w. And now V, the L, we have that the L, 2 D, 2 D plus 1 over D minus 1 norm is bounded by E of T over T squared to some power, right? So it's bounded by E of T over T squared to 2 over D plus 1. So in short, we have that integral from 0 to infinity of e of t, t squared dt, is bounded by the integral from 0 to infinity, 1 over t squared, is the integral from 0 t of e of tau. Okay, uh, and then dt. So let's look at this one's a little bit easier because it's you've got just a half, right? Half is the good. Okay, um, but now um, you can use your uh, Houdini theorem, right? Because remember, we're always just figuring we have e of t is actually finite, right? We've always kind of because we're starting with this data, and then we can kind of um, make better and better approximations with it. So we can always just start with the assumption that E of T is finite. So we can use our Fubini theorem with this one. Um, and so this term is bounded by 
the integral zero to infinity of e of t t squared And then this other one is similar, but the important thing is that the power, when d is greater than three, the power is less than one. Right? You want that power to be less than one. But now, this gives us, you know, and then we got some a to some power. This, remember, this controls our dt, right? So we can absorb this into the left-hand side, and you give a uniform, and get you a uniform bound on the integral of epsilon of t over t squared, which is a uniform bound on your Picard's norm. Right. So, um, so that's, um, and, and you could, yeah, so, so this is, and this is okay, we, we can be careful. If we, 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 if we weren't giving a talk, we'd be more careful, right? We would integrate, we'd do a finite t, right? And then do our integrals on a finite t, but everything would work out, it would work. Um, so, so that gives us the pollen, you know, so you end up with, because remember, this is, this is your strict, this is controlled by your strict arts norms. So this is bounded as a polynomial of function of A star as well. So you end up with a polynomial bound on the scattering side. Uh, so in the last 10 minutes, um, but, but of course we need D bigger than three in order to do that, because if we have E of T to the one, then you've got a problem. And you couldn't do that, right? With e of t to the one. Okay, now let me um, talk now about the case where you don't have a Bessoff norm anymore. And I wrote down in the notes some fibs that, I, you know, a fib, right? So it's not a lie. It's not a lie, but it's, it's, it's a fib, right? And, and, it, and the reason I say that is because telling the truth is hard, right? But 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 if we do, we could do it hard. We could deal with these little technical problems. We deal with the technical problems, but I don't want to talk about those here, right? Like we can talk about that afterwards. But I, I just want. So I'm going to fib a couple of times. But it's a fib, right? It's not a lie. It's it, so. Does that make sense what I'm doing? Like I'm not I'm not telling a, a lie to, to solve the problem. But I'm I'm telling a lie, or no fib, excuse me, to make the talk more interesting, right? <laughs> so we don't have to sit here. We can talk about the it's okay. So um everybody looks really concerned, but Maybe they should be, but uh, um, okay. So we have our our now. We, let's say we have data in a Bessoff space or not in a Bessoff space in U, in H one half. Well, uh, we still have that x times f as the same bound. That's fib. That's a fib, right? Because you don't you don't have the, the endpoint double of embedding anymore when you're in H one half, right? That's fib. But but we're pretty close. Right? So so we can work around that. We work around that in a tech, dealing with the technical detail, right? That's what I mean by a fib. It's it's not a or a, I, I don't even know what you would call it. It's not even a fib. It's it's like I don't even know what what to call it. It's like something that is close enough to being true that we can just figure it's true for the purposes of detection. So so we'll even say that. 
if you're if you're in the region x is bigger than t or, or any any constant really then you also have those t f bounds here right because t is bigger than or x is bigger than t right modulo constant you have the same bounds um, so we only really care about this this inside part right it's just a so another fib yeah. Um, the integral from x is less than or equal to t over 2, nav of v squared. So we, we need to get some, the, the problem is we don't have the, disper, the decay anymore. We don't have a dispersed vector, so we don't have any decay in t, right? Which would be a, is a problem inside this cone, right? Because we don't have the decay in t. So we have another fib. Say vt squared dx is bounded by e of t. So why is that a fib? Well, it's a fib because uh, here, here's our e of t, remember? We have t plus x, lv, but then we have this d minus 1v, right? So if we didn't have that, because t plus x is about of size t, and then t minus x is about of size t as well inside that cone, inside that in restricted cone. And then L is dt plus dr, and then L bar is dt minus dr. So you get that bound plus a term d squared. But we're going to fib and say that we, we're going to fib and say it's not there, right? It's, it's there, and we can deal with it, but, but it's, it, we're not going to talk about it. In three, uh, t squared times the integral e to the little t, and then I have a delta t. So it's delta is small, one over x times nabla v squared e t squared d x t theta t. Tau, this should be our t Okay. Well, now this is this is a this is your local energy decay, right? And then your Morowitz estimate, and that's controlled by your H one norm of v times the L two norm of v t, right? So, so that's again, this is this is kind of a fib because. Um, remember, we had that t squared times the h1 norm is, is bounded by e of t. Well, that was a fib. But then we also have this, and, and then we have to use finite propagation speed, a delta number, or like a term, a constant that depends on delta times, because uh, you know because we're in the region x is less than equal to delta t. But yeah, so the delta there, um, and then you've got some error terms because v isn't strictly controlled by your equation. But but it's okay. So so it's, you know I'm fibbing right. But but I want this t squared. That's the point. I want this t squared here, right? Because I want that decay in t. And now I've got it from the from formal energy. And what was the fourth? Oh, and then the fourth fib. And then I'm out of time. So I I I'm. Uh, um, and, and again, these are not. These are not insurmountable issues. Oh, t tilde equal to the soup of one and um, and fib number four. We end up with. You know what? I'm I'm not going to write down the. Oh yeah, here we go. E times f. 
on the t times lv, because that's that's what we care about now is when we've got the t's in there. Because we got the x's in there, we we can deal with it using our radial sublev index. Um, but this is bounded by t squared times one over x plus one half. And, and that's not even a fib. That's true, but but um, but but we're going to have to use our other fibs for this. We would have to use our other fibs for that. And then um, so then um, yeah, just just briefly to finish. So what what we end up doing is take the data and split it into two pieces. So you've got a piece that's that's that is weighted, you know, in the weighted space and is has finite energy, and then you've got the remainder that's small in epsilon, right? It, it's small in epsilon, or it's small in, in H1 half, so it's a small upsize epsilon. And then you, you calculate your energy, but, but because we're not starting with data at t equals, not starting with E being zero at zero, we, we start at t, we just push forward in time and start at t equals one, because we're, we're starting with data that's, that's finite at, at one. And then we have that uh, the integral from t tilde to t of tf tlv is going to be bounded by epsilon times epsilon to the four over d minus one times e of t. So then you 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 gain an epsilon, which allows you to absorb it back into your you know do do the same thing we did before and absorb it back into your your integral of one of epsilon of t over t squared. But, but the cost of that is that you've got, for a specific data, um, for a specific data, you have, you set your initial data and then you have a scattering size that depends only on the, the r that you need to cut off at and then the frequency you have to cut off at. So then you have to use a profile decomposition then to get your, to show that you have um, a uniform bound on the H one half node. So that's 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 enough time, I guess. Thank you.